Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday. Um, we had a massive snowstorm yesterday. Uh, Momo had his dental surgery yesterday, so we were battling a snowstorm with a kitty in the car who was super stoned on the way back. But I'm not going to talk too much about this. Um, the patrons will will get sort of the, the, the kind of funny, kind of sad, poor kitty stuff. Uh, help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. I am sure the YouTube algorithm is going to attract people to this video who don't care about my cat, as cute as he is. But you don't know he's cute because you haven't seen him yet. Um, so I want to get right into this. Um... This is a big, big topic. My thoughts connected to the why did he think this would help him Joss Whedon article that's on Vulture and was featured in New York Magazine. Um, whew, if you've got time, it's very long. It's so long that I can't do a close read on it. It just wouldn't be a good use of time. Um, but if you have the time and, and the stomach and the cojones... Um, it's interesting. It's not a fun read. It's an angering read. It's an upsetting read, but it's a really good three, 360 review process of a textbook vulnerable narcissist. And because the article does such a good job about it, what I'd like to do is summarize sort of the biggest OMGs for me and then get into why I think that the whole Joss Whedon saga is not just a repudiation of Hollywood practices. Um, it's also really spotlighting the problems with notably academic feminism and collectivist feminism in general. Yes, Leanna's going there, guys. Um, stay tuned. Let me go back to the top four or five moments in the article where I was like, well done to Lila Shapiro. She spent a year on this fucking thing. No way she's getting the money she deserves for the amount of reporting she did here. The article has very little embroidery. Um, goes easy on anonymous sources. They are there, but there's a lot of people who went on the record for this. Um, but uh, the the big ones for me was take mommy who he used to build up his his the 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 narrative of his male feminist legend it was always i was raised by a strong mother and this is why i write such great female characters now he's throwing her under the bus blaming him for his problems because she was a difficult woman to be raised by even though she died in 1991 1991 he said 30 years to get over whatever influence she may have or get the like, grow beyond whatever influence she may have um and own his shit he's blaming her okay that's that's very feminist joss whedon blame a dead woman for for your own behavior nice job uh but there's more than that um he says he didn't threaten Gal Gadot's career. English is just not her first language and she didn't understand what he was saying. Yeah, he said that. Check out the article. I didn't I didn't want to believe that when I read it on secondary sources and that's part of the reason I read the article. I didn't think he'd say something so craven and shameless. Uh, if you see anything with Gal Gadot in it, she's perfectly fluent in English. And she's a smart lady. And she was in the Israeli military. She's not prone to being easily offended. And of course, Gal Gadot says, I understood perfectly. I, 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 I believe her. The idea that she just misunderstood. It just, it just doesn't. It, it, it just, it just, if, if it was a, a misunderstanding like that, it should have been easy to clear up. She would not have felt the need to say anything all this time later. It would have been a problem that was solved. They would have had a laugh about it. That's not what it was. Of course, it's not what it was. Um, he also said that, you know, 
he cut Ray Fisher's part down in the Justice League movie because Ray Fisher's a bad actor. Yeah, he said that. I mean, I watched all how many hours of the Snyder Cut? I was not... I am not the biggest Zack Snyder fan. I understand he is much nicer to work for than than Joss Whedon. Part of the reason he has apparently um, so much support in Hollywood is because he is a nice guy to to work with and work for. This is what I've heard. I I, I have not had any direct contact with him. Uh, just saying that because I'm not a fan of his his output. Um, but that cyborg story I thought was the heart of the original Snyder film. I did not think Ray Fisher's acting was bad. I think that someone who sees that performance and thinks the acting was bad may have a skewed perspective that they may need to look at. And I'm not necessarily saying that this is a race thing with Joss Whedon. I think he came in there and because he's a nerd, um, you know, was like, I don't care about Cyborg. I want what Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman fuck Cyborg. I think that's probably more to do with it. Now, I understand because of the way it was handled, how, what Ray Fisher's feelings are. The Ray Fisher issue is a separate thing. We do not have time to get into that right now. Because, um, so not only did he gaslight Gal Gadot, uh, make up a completely ridiculous story involving Ray Fisher where anybody who watches the Snyder Cut can decide for themselves, um, throws his own mother under the bus to try to justify his terrible behavior, but he's still claiming... The same shit he said that came out when his wife wrote the OMG mic drop bit about what a shitty person he was, that he was powerless to control his dick on the Buffy the Vampire set. That's my paraphrase. He was powerless to not sleep with these women. He says, I understand it messed with the power dynamics, but I was powerless. And the article, actually, the reporter says she laughed, thinking he was joking. And he said, no, I'm serious. These were the type of women that rejected me in, in, in high school when I was young. And I was powerless to resist because if I didn't sleep with them, I felt like I would have regretted it. I'm not kidding. Read the article. That's there. I mean... That's a feminist? Really? Really? Revenge fucks from high school, buddy? Really? That's... Okay. And here's my sort of unified theory of Joss Whedon and, and the horrible shitty stuff that's been passed off as feminism. Um, there is a thing that happens with people like this. And it's... I, I don't, I don't want to just call out male creators on this one uh, because it's not exclusively men but these days we have a lot of these male feminists Joss Whedon uh, what's his nuts Druckmann um, you know these these rah 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 guys yeah feminism I'm a feminist let's get one of my actresses trolled on social media you know because allies um, they write women as lesser men they write women as failed men because that's their point of connection these guys create these female characters to put words in their mouth and play with like puppets um and, and okay joss whedon put words in every marvel superhero's mouth he he butchered character voice on pretty much every um Marvel character that was in the Avengers. Um, I don't have time to go into it because that would be a two hour rant. That was something that drove me crazy. But, you know, short version, 
a rape joke should never come out of to- have come out of Tony Stark's mouth. This is a movie. This is a superhero movie. Iron Man's a flawed hero, but Tony Stark's a hero. Okay, he's a hero in the comics that had a drinking problem. He was kind of a dick, but there's kind of a dick, and then guy who tells rape jokes. And yes, the right of prima nocte was that's what he said when he was lifting, trying to lift Mjolnir as a joke. That was the right that English lords had to go in and sleep with the wives, sexually assault the wives of of the men who lived on their lands because they were trying to breed out the the Scottish population, among others. Uh, it happened in France as well, I believe. But it was a nobleman's right to rape a dude's wife on their wedding night. So their first kid and therefore the inheritor of whatever meager possessions they had would actually be the child of the local nobleman and not the dude who actually loved the woman. That was what Tony Stark was invoking. Should have never ended up in the movie. Um, You know, just we never should have put misogynist language in in Loki's dialogue. Um, Black Widow should not have been subjected to that in a fun superhero movie. But also you're talking about a character whose father was the guy who was fucking horrible to him. His dad locked him up. His mom brought him books while he was in jail. But somehow he's this raging misogynist all of a sudden. That does not track. It does, however, if every character in the Avengers is somehow Joss Whedon speaking through them. And I mean, Hawkeye suddenly has a personality in Hawkeye. Yay, finally. I'm so happy for Jeremy Renner. You know, Black Widow's... What they did to Natasha Romanoff was just so horrible. I could talk for a half hour on that. But short story, you know, I'm a monster because I don't have a uterus and can't have babies. Fuck. Right? Oh, just when... Just when she seems most powerless, pushed back in a chair and, and lightly misted instead of sweaty with perfect makeup and doing O face, that's when she's really in control. When guys are a manhandling her and abusing her, gee, what does that sound like? That sounds a lot like the the uh, incoherent ramblings of a guy who thinks he's powerless to control his dick around hot women because high school nerd. I had a problem with that depiction of Black Widow at the time. That was a terrible, like that as a superpower was terrible. Why, why, um, we, we see the end result of that is they're stuck with these character things in the MCU, right? And so the big triumphant moment in the Black Widow movie is, is a, is a moment of self-harm. So she can defeat the forces of misogyny. I am so tired of of the the villain, the 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 bad guy that a female MCU hero has to defeat is is misogyny. I'm so sick of that. Please don't do that in Captain Marvel anymore. I think with the handoff to Florence Pugh, she's already transcended that. Just because Yellen is allowed to be funny and awesome and kind of brash and you know, a little arrogant, but in a cool way, like she has a character. There's a bright shining moment where Natasha Romanoff was allowed to have a character. And uh, I don't remember if it was Winter Soldier or Civil War, but it was one of the Captain America flicks and then it was gone. Um, but pff, you see, like you can go through every, every Marvel hero. There were times where Thor's dialogue was just not Thor. It was Joss Whedon. You know, um, Mark Ruffalo doesn't tend to say much uh, in those movies. He's, he's mostly reactions. So it wasn't too bad because he had less to go on. But I mean, Hulk gets screwed because of the universal rights thing, right? And I love Mark Ruffalo as Bruce Banner. He's so good. Um, but I digress. Every character in that thing was some form of Joss Whedon. And... Black Widow was this, I can't reproduce, so I'm a monster. It's the flip side of, I didn't fuck hot chicks in high school, so I'm worthless somehow, and I have to reclaim that through acts of epic douchebaggery that I then claim I'm powerless to stop. Like, 
what the, this is some sick, twisted shit, okay? But it was all through. It was all through his work. How many examples did we need of Angel turning evil after having sex with Buffy? Because now he was happy. Oh, yeah, because happiness turns somebody evil. That makes no sense no sense but people people justified that then you know oh angel's gone he's got his own spin-off series where whedon was apparently making charisma carpenter fucking miserable when she got pregnant probably before that but especially then uh but uh you know then we give buffy a new love interest a serial murderer whose first victim was his own mother. Gee, I wonder what Joss Whedon was working out then. The mommy that he used to build up his feminist legend and then blamed for all his bad behavior. We, we see this. Someone doesn't put this in their work. Um, unless there's some issues there because it's it's not that somebody would create a completely reprehensible character okay completely reprehensible characters negan from the walking dead right but then you make them the love interest for your allegedly strong female lead that's fucked up man like Give her a nice guy to be your boyfriend, especially what happened with Angel. Like, oh, no, but but nice guys, nice guys don't get girls. You know, maybe you were never a nice guy, Joss Whedon, and that's part of the problem. You were always this sick, twisted little fuck. And, and people saw that until you got to Hollywood, where th there's a lot of sick, twisted little fucks out there, right? Uh, but even before that, Buffy suffered from the same issue that Abby does and Ellie does in in The Last of Us, right? They create these strong female characters that are impossible, okay? You you cannot get a body like Abby has and and still have a, a lovely little like nice fat layer, nice soft rounded face and have 3% body fat in the rest of your body eating fucking cafeteria burritos. You can't women women can can get can get you know can get muscles, but the diets very specific and and burritos every day are are not on that menu. Uh you know Ellie just looking sickly but then, you know, she's all skinny and messed up and not sleeping and all that stuff. But she's still like wrestling zombies to the ground because that happens. You don't have muscle cramping or brain fog and reduced reaction time. You know, you, oh, she's got PTSD, but she never freezes up when it matters. It's all this unattainable shit. And Buffy Summers wasn't nearly as nihilistic, but she was a size zero girl with noodle arms who somehow was able to drive a wooden stake manually through the sternum of an undead monster. The amount of force required to do that. I mean, she'd be able to fucking lift cars, man. It, it don't get on me about technique. People used to fight me on this. People used to fight me on this. And, and yes, you can theoretically show physically how it could be possible if it's like perfect technique every time. But when it's manual like that, she's a fucking teenager. She hasn't been training in fucking martial arts for, oh, but she's the slayer. I don't fucking care. This is an unattainable standard. And we recognize the writing problems with characters like this when it comes to writing a character like, say, Superman. You give a character too many skills, it's difficult to give them interesting challenges, right? Um, even someone like Thor, um, they have to be, oh, he's feeling unworthy. And so he loses Mjolnir again to give him any sort of vulnerability, right? Because he's so strong and powerful and, and all that stuff. Um, not that there aren't really great Superman stories and really great Thor stories. What I'm saying is the reason we get periodically good stories about these characters is that we recognize with male characters that 
if you give them these ridiculous in inhuman physiques and superpowers, you need to really double down on the human element to give them something that the audience can relate to, right? Could you imagine if Jane Foster was a horrible murderer or, you know, Lois Lane um, killed people, <laughs> including her own father? Like, could, could you imagine if these were the women that they, 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 that they put these heroes with everybody would be this is crap man it's always you know you have you have mary jane but then you have black cat and black cat's always sort of a, the temptation you know but mary jane's the, the good one right these women have to be supportive and caring and understanding and always be there and then you know oh my god why is she treating him so mean when she finally gets sick of him not being around all the time because he's off saving the world right you see the dichotomy here right and, and when you look at these allegedly strong female characters, they are grounded in misery. And they, uh, in, instead of, instead of being allowed to play up certain feminine characteristics and, and applaud and, and glorify this, a state of femininity, they always have to sort of be these masculinized characters to be strong so they're not you know they're not they're not that they're not that kind of girl the same way the guys that create these characters weren't the type of guys they thought hot women would go for now i mean that that just speaks to the issues they have with relating to the sex that they are attracted to. And, and this is the, the sexualizing versus objectification issue, right? And this is really poorly understood. And I may have to do another video on this because there's been some slippage on the understanding of what objectification is, okay? When there's an individual... The example we I, I use all the time is Salma Hayek because everybody seems to agree that Salma Hayek is freaking smoking hot, right? Um, or, you know, Olivia Munn is smoking hot, right? It's You're not objectifying that individual by saying they're smoking hot because they still have a name. They're still talented as the actress. Olivia Munn fucking slayed on the newsroom, man. She was great on that show. Good for freaking her. Um, you know, they have names. They have identifiable characteristics. They have boundary integrity, meaning you are not powerless in the PP around them, guys like Joss Whedon. No, they're, a, they're people. They're a whole people that you happen to find attractive. The minute it becomes objectifying is when you reduce them to the hot women that rejected you in high school because that is objectively not true. And there's a lot of that that still goes on in media and in discussions surrounding media. You know, the, the same way that grown-ass women shouldn't still be living a Taylor Swift song in their 40s. This high school paradigm is constantly being trapped by your experiences in high school. It's fucked up, man. I say this as a person who was a nerd in high school that was so degendered that I had guys, I was, I was tutoring at homework, were like telling me their girl problems and said, Leanna, if you were a girl, would you like me? And these were quite attractive young men. I mean, it's like, and, but you know, the gut punch in that moment of, yeah, I, I am so not registering as feminine to you. This sucks, you know? Um, then I got out of high school by some weird twist of fate. I ended up on a show with dancing girls in a hot tub, ended up doing pinup modeling. And at some point you realize you're not the person you were in high school anymore. Stop fighting that fight. 
At least that's what happens when you're not in a constant state of arrested development because you can't get over shit that happened to you when you were 15, 16 years old. The shit that happened to you when you're 15, 16 year old is not an excuse, nor is it a justification for crap you do in your 40s or your 30s. There's a bit of a of a gray area in the 20s because you're you know your 20s is quite frankly unlearning a lot of the damage that happened to you in the teen years that that's just development right um but there's no fucking excuse when when you have spent more years out of out of school than you spent in school there's no excuse for blaming your shitty current behavior on girls or guys mistreating you when you know when you were in for five years of your life okay because let's face it elementary school there isn't that boy girl thing there but these aren't guys who were heartbroken by particular women and for women who do it these aren't women who had their heart broken by particular guys these are people who are resentful that the hot chick or hot chicks did not pay them attention and therefore grant them status. And that's objectifying because it's just about hot chick as status symbol. Not, I think this woman is is wonderful and I love them, right? Very different thing. Individual woman, Olivia Munn, Salma Hayek, right? Tangible, individualized characteristics, hot chick. That's the difference. That's the difference. And a guy who was unable to make that difference, who every woman on Buffy pretty much looked like Bratz dolls. They were the same body with slightly different facial features, you know. And oh, he put one plus size woman in, I don't know, fucking dollhouse or something like that. And she was interviewed for the article going, oh no, he was lovely to me. One fucking person. One Come on, that that is so clearly him trying to get out ahead of probably some of the criticism he was getting. But this guy got hoisted up on the shoulders of academic feminism to the point as the article starts off talking about there was a conference and you were not allowed to criticize. You know, you had to do it so gently if you did it all. And oh, I'm a big Joss Whedon fan. Oh, there are some things that are problematic, but I'm a big Joss Whedon fan. You couldn't go the way I did. This is some sick, twisted shit. What the fuck, man? I like the movie you made with Pee Wee Herman and Luke Perry. Rest in peace. And what was her name? Christy Swanson? Um, but come on. It was a blonde cheerleader trope that you were just making funnies with. Um, the Buffy TV show, the Buffy movie, were, were not high art. They were not the fucking bell jar. You know, like, holy shit. But you were not allowed to say this. And why? Why? And this is why I'm saying that the whole Joss Whedon saga is a real repudiation of how especially academic feminism, but also some activist feminism and media criticism feminism is organized. It's collectivist structures. It's collectivist structures, not individualist structures. It is not a structure where uh, this person, Liana, has an idea and then say, you know, Anita Sarkeesian has an idea and um, I don't know. Somebody else, Sam Meggs or, um, I don't know, ContraPoints or, or, you know, Tristan over at Nerdette, um, they have an idea and they get together and they talk about ideas, which is what we did on uh, Nerdette Newsstand's podcast uh, uh, stream over the weekend on Sunday night. And we disagreed on some stuff and we went back and forth. And we had some hilarious conversation. It was good ass times. That doesn't happen nearly enough. It's all Anita Sarkeesian has an idea. I'll rally behind Anita Sarkeesian. She is she is the queen bee of this moment. Joss Whedon has an idea. This is feminist allyship. All rally around Joss Whedon. He he is, I don't know, fucking Chitari queen of feminism. Um King Dude Thanos, I don't know what. Um th- it's always this single entity gets hoisted on the shoulders of the collective and no one is allowed to not even criticize not even criticize just go hey wait a minute maybe we should like put a kind of put a flag on this play he's doing some stuff that maybe ain't so great 
it, 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 you know, you can question that and then they can say like, look, okay, not my best moment. Um, or, okay, I did this because I wanted them to be truly reprehensible and then I attempted a redemption arc that maybe didn't entirely work um, or something like that. But you're not allowed to begin this conversation because any threat to the fucking Chitari queen is a threat to the collectivist hive mind. You know, and the problem with that is we know what happened to the fucking Chitari. Tony Stark got the goddamn Infinity Gauntlet snapped once and everybody's gone, right? That's the problem with these collectivist structures. And, you know, you've got entire groups, entire conferences that are now, oh my God, what do we do? Because Joss Whedon has fallen. Um, it shouldn't matter if, if Joss Whedon has fallen in an individualized system Joss Whedon should not be the final word on anything involving women anyway he's a guy who makes pop culture entertainment stuff um you know no single person should have that big a voice and that doesn't mean people can't write things that are brilliant and influential you know um but it's too fragile. It's too invested in just protecting these individualized voices that are supposed to speak for some great mass of people. Instead of actually debating ideas and making ideas be the focus and actually getting the best ideas so we can get some fucking progress on issues um related notably to you know certain racialized subsections of of women in you know the u.s and canada and other places um and hey maybe around the world in in countries that still have menstruation taboos and all that stuff like this is this is stuff that actually could be fixed fairly simply if anybody gave it a fucking shred of attention instead we're fighting over Joss Whedon and you know why well it's it's a bit of narcissism in its own way Joss Whedon was that thing that made these feminist scholars feel better about themselves as a kid I don't know why I never found Buffy terribly validating nobody on that show was like me um Closest was Willow, but then it sort of was like, no, not so much. Uh, then, then I like, I, I sort of related to Oz, but then he was gone. Um, you know, uh, but like that, that made them feel good about themselves. Oh, it's a girl on TV that's, that's strong without question, uh, questioning what that strength meant. Um, and, and instead of developing female creators and, 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 getting more interesting female characters, complex female characters on various screens, everything just replicated Buffy and everything was about sustaining Buffy and debating Buffy and putting Buffy up. And, and the debate was, is Buffy good or great? Not, hey, maybe this show really isn't all that and we need to question some of what's, some of the messages that are going on here, just saying. And, and this is why I, I am so wary of collectivism, why I do not practice it, why I do not advocate it. Um, it makes movements too easy to dismiss. And this is why, you know, the I understand why, why a lot of people out there just judge feminism by the wackiest worst shit that gets out there. It's structurally, that's the fan, that, that's the Tony Stark snap, right? Um, Tony Snark, Tony Stark, snap, um, you know, or even Thanos snap, one snap, you wipe out, wipe out half of feminist criticism, okay, who wouldn't do that, who's threatened by it, but then you get the other side, right, is, is you get these strong women, you know, lashing out at men, 
male viewers, male consumers of media, whatever, when the truth is that the assholes are really the minority. The vast majority of guys just take it, enjoy it, or don't. Don't say anything either way. You know, they just go, all right, you're doing your job. It may be my thing. It may not be my thing. Or, you know, they're appreciative of it, whatever. But they, they don't they don't attack. They don't fling horrible shit. They don't, you know. But the focus is on that 10% as if it's, and it's, it's normalizing the bad behavior. It's making that 10% indicative of the whole. And, you know, that's the thinking that allows people to not question, oh, I'm just going to snap my fingers and wipe out everything of that kind everywhere, you know? And, and that that's part of the reason I was so not, not great on the ending of Endgame. You know that you got mad at me for that. Um, but this is, you know, this is the same continuum as stuff that I was talking about about yesterday that I'm suddenly less hot the minute I have an opinion on something which is fucking bizarre but we all understand that it's true like nobody I read in the comments at least when I saw them yesterday argued with me on that they just you know more on that on Feedback Friday but this is all a continuum right we're reducing people to tropes angry nerd shithole gamer you know um, these are not things I believe like I said these are tropes you know um you know, angry feminist, like hot chick, you know, hot guy, loser nerd, you know, instead of, hey, maybe talk to that guy who's kind of awkward. Because guess what? You feel kind of awkward. Like maybe talk to him and see what he likes and see if he's a good person. Because let's face it, the women who are just all drooling over Thor... Thor is a guy who came down to Earth, got the worthy stamp of approval from his dad so he could wield a hammer again by falling in love with an, uh, a Midgardian woman, an Earth woman, who's a few hundred years younger than him but still had to teach him maturity. And once he got his hammer back or got worthiness back, uh, he went back to his home dimension and ghosted her for years. That's the kind of guy you want, really? Really, ladies? Really? No, you just want to look at him. You know, you're not judging him by the whole of his character. We are now because, you know, now he got a tummy and he's funny. But that's how it works, right? That's how it works. Same thing with the hot chicks, right? And I, I give Chris Hemsworth credit for for evolving the character that way. I think I think it's great. I'm, I'm way more a fan of Dad Bod Thor because he's a lot less of an asshole. <laughs> but... I'm a mature adult and I see this and I don't I don't judge entire swaths of humanity by hot chick, not hot chick, hot guy, not hot guy. That's not the way my brain works. Because I'm an individualized grown up. Can we please have stories for individualized grown ups by individualized grown-ups, can we please can we please have criticism and commentary and questions from individualized people? No, we won't be able to until we overcome these collectivist academic and media systems that fuel insane phenomenon like Joss Whedon. Interested on in your comments on this. And again, if you want to see more about my life, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Lena K. Or if you want to support this kind of criticism that I'm sure I would get howled at for by that 10%. Thanks for watching.